kissing All big like a king on the hill, yeah Talk back, ain't pity yourself now Bleed out like you really gotta tear it all out Cut loose, but you better lock on to yourself Big shoes, got you tripping all over yourself Tight news, got you ringing up around the neck Big boy, got it bleeding all over your back Could it ever break like this? The same old way big show is in Hawaii's North Shore. I wish I could take you with me, but there's just not a plane big enough to fit you on. Was I a pig farmer? No, I was not a pig farmer. My grandfather had a piggery and um, back east in northeastern Ontario, he had, yeah, I mean, I don't think he was a very good pig farmer. I mean, the pigs were always getting out and it's, it's, it's a lot of work to keep pigs um, encased into their little area. Um, it smells, um, but I guess he had a couple good contracts taking donuts and sour milk from some of the dairy and donut suppliers in North Bay, Ontario. So there was always rancid chocolate milk that I could, you know, find a fresh one if I was lucky and lots of somewhat stale, but not always stale donuts. So yeah, you know, um, I was around pigs a lot as a kid, you know, I first animal I ever rode was a pig, you know, and, uh. I've stopped that in my later years. No way. Yes way. I'm telling you, this is a genuine Maui truth. This thing's a collector's item. There's very few of these left on the road today. If you want to call it and get you around town, there's no better gas pods than what this thing will give you. Well, you see, this sort of fits my image. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $600 for it. That's it. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Come along with that, with that deal. Come on, hey. Right now, I have $650. Wait, okay. wait, a wait, a wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can you excuse us for a second? Hey, come. Listen, buddy, all right? There's no way we were going to pay this guy that much for this piece of junk. So let's talk, all right? I've come here to winter, not pick pineapples for car peanuts. Hey, me too, man. You any good? Oh, yeah. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm going to the teacher the first day, man. That's where the big show is. The big time. The big action. <laughs> Boom. Pokipa? Yeah. Um, well, I guess if you go, I go, man. Right on, man. Tell you what, we'll go halfers on the car. Let's deal with the man. Yeah. You pay now, I'll pay you later. Man, what's the smell? Jesus. I don't smell anything. It smells like the farm back home in Swamish. Oh. Everything smells like this back there. You guys ever take a bath over there? Oh, you're such a spoiled little city slicker. Yeah. Boy, I'll bet you take showers in Grey Poop Pond back home. Well, at least I got no Grey Poop in my shoes, man. All right, we come from different worlds. So what? Yeah. Whoa, what's that, man? Hey, how can I help you guys? 
Well, I have Sophia. Hi, my name is Jazz. This is my good friend, the Cisco Kid. All right, what's happening? What can I do for you guys? Personally, I'm looking for a sponsor. Sponsor? Yeah, hey, man. sure, we'll sponsor you. Bill, what's a blue light special today? Sponsorship this week? How about keychains and watch bands? 15% off. Sounds great. Let's wrap it up and go. This is the High Tech Wind Report, brought to you by Dakine Hawaii and Hokipa Surf and Sail. A small craft and high surf advisory are in effect today due to extreme conditions along the entire North Shore. Up at Hokipa, we've got 15 to 35 knot easterly winds with wave heights of 6 to 8 feet. Sail safe and buckle your footstraps. There is no way I'm sailing here. Oh, no, man, no. we'll just stay here. These rocks will become our second home. You just watch, wait, and see. Double or Nothing was, was basically a script I wrote about my experiences of coming to Hawaii when nobody was really here at the time and going through all the pitfalls and hardships that, you know, somebody has to do trying to obtain a lot of pleasure, which was windsurfing. I looked for, you know, a couple of up-and-coming talents who weren't really sponsored at the time and had the flamboyant personality. I was kind of looking for one with a flamboyant personality and one with a real, somebody who did their talking on the water. And, uh, of course, Jason was a wild man and Francisco, the guy who did his talking on the water. Every, everything we've done influences your life. And I think the movie was really, um, it was really us in a lot of ways. <laughs> you know, it was these kids, it was, you know, of course exaggerated, but really it was, it was really uh, well, everything that we went through, that we lived through. And uh, so it was, um, yeah, the movie really played a role in our, in our life. It was something that we did, that we lived, and it was a pretty classic story, I think. Let's go! Yeah! <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. You guys looking for something? Yeah. Cheap place for rain. For you two, I know the perfect place. It's very quaint. It's right over here. I see you, man. Welcome to your new pad, boys. Home sweet home. Nice neighbors. 
At least we got a roof over our head, you know? <laughs> oh, freaking hell. My, who am I? Who am I? Mama? Mama? Is that you? I can't see anything. I can't. Hill, Hill, I can see the light. I can see the light. Yeah, looking back on the movie, it was sort of, um, you know, it, it kind of highlighted some of the highs and lows of coming over to Hawaii back then. And I think people still go through those highs and lows now, you know, living in dumpy places, although it seems like most of the dumpy places have been kind of plastered and painted over and turned into vacation rentals for a little while anyway. And um, yeah, you know, it was, it was good fun. In thinking of the movie, in being a part of making the movie, I would say the one thing that stuck out on my, in my mind was one day when we were um, sailing down the coast, and I think we were down at Camp One, and we were out sailing, and we were getting some good video footage, and the rainbows were out, and we were out sailing, and it was just how pretty it was. And um, it was just a nice moment. We were out windsurfing, and we were having fun, and just living the dream. Eggs don't burn in the kitchen, beans don't burn on the grill. Took a whole lot hey of shit right in, just to get up hey that hill. Hey man, what'd you get us, you crazy Mexican? Yeah, Refried beans? Ice cream, beans? beer, sunny, I don't know, something here and there. Cool, <laughs> ice cream and beers will make Sundays. Yeah. Breakfast of champions. Oh, We're gonna we go. shred now. Ah, Moosehead, something of my Canadian heritage. What a man. Ah, cookies. So where should we sail today? <laughs> oh! Ah, now the ice cream. Did I tell you it was a classic or what, huh? In Canada, we use Southern Comfort. Mm. Oh man, I don't know if I like that. Ah, uh, that is true. nice. Oh. Every Christmas. <laughs> you know, put the chocolate. Mm. Oh yeah. Nice. Mm. Mm. Let the chocolate, you know, float there.
I started windsurfing in 1985 uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Um, maybe a little bit a couple of years before, but only like, you know, playing with some friends. And by 85, I've, I was fully hooked. Well, I originally came from Canada. Vancouver would have been home for the longest period of time there before Hawaii, which has been 20 years now. Um, I'm 36 years old now. I've been in Hawaii for, it'll be almost 20 years this year. Um, and I started windsurfing out of necessity when I was, uh, geez, 13 years old. I needed a job. Somebody gave me a job basically running rentals, and, and I got hooked not long af after into it. And uh, I said, that's, that's really the ultimate sport. in the Maui battle. Blood, red river. Yeah, they are. Yep. Big one. An offering to the gods. Me too. Luna! I'm a stupid Hey, Lucy on me. Kahuna, huna, huna, ula, ua, a, a, pele. La Cesas! Ah, can't tell you. What got you? It's your thing, yeah. All we have to do is get a job. Take this, for example. Man, we could do this. We could make bucks here hustling the tourists or something. Come on, let's check it out. Who knows? What's up, man? Come on. Let's try that. Okay. Here, hey, here you go. Ready? Here you go. Hi. Hey, man. Just... <laughs> well, though, excellent. Good evening. You know? Yeah, Say what? Why don't you go on a long vacation? work the tourists and the birds for you, man. Well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I can do this, you know. You can do this. A few birds, you get shit on a little yeah, bit. Yeah, man, that's eh? a street theater. You know, yeah, you're going to like this. Take a vacation. Oh, there you man. go. Hey, whoa. See, 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 for us. Ah!
Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Cool birds, huh? Will you lay those food? I'm bleeding. Whoa. Ah! Ah! I gotta go. Hold on. Just, just a minute. I'll be back in a minute. Ah! Stay right there. It. Okay. This man. Sis. You try me. You're getting heavy, <laughs> sis. <laughs> Take care of this. I have to go. I'll be back. Don't panic. It's organic, okay? Okay, there we go. All right, Cisco, take the picture. Take the picture. Take the picture. Quick. Hey, don't run. 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 It was more just the opportunity of, of having someone who actually gave a shit about us and actually wanted to film us doing stuff. And then, you know, my biggest motivation was like, wow, they're going to be filming in 16 millimeter film. You know, film quality was pretty cool. You know, we'd done video stuff before and work with photographers, but, you know, a day in, day out thing on the water was a great opportunity. And you have to think back, we weren't very sponsored at the time. You know, that $150 a day you were paying us was freaking huge. It was, it was anything better than digging ditches and moving rocks for Mickey Eskimo or, you know, or pick, you name, oh, yeah, you know, to get paid to sail every day, give me a break. I mean, that's, that's the dream. Look at this car. It's our freaking twin. Yeah, man, so we're double, double, mm -hmm. double. Hey, hi. Hey, guys, you want to play Francais? Uh, yes. No. Well, wait, wait. This, this, this comes for a little bit of sign language. Okay. Me and you get together. Your together. friend, you know, we all get together. Hey, Mark! Get over here! Give us a hand with these two! Yeah, man. Yeah, he's a French girl. French is a bit rusty, but, uh, what's happening, girl? Um, on a cassé dans notre voiture, on nous a pris notre argent. Um, Nos papiers, well, it seems someone's broken their hearts. They have lots of money. They want to take you guys to the fish bucket for lunch, and uh, they're really excited and they want to stay with you forever. Oh, oh, wow. oh, oh. Good luck. Good luck. Cool, yeah. let's, let's go. Let's go, yeah. Let's go, yeah. We'll take our car. Damn, it's a good thing they're paying for this because I don't have a dime. Don't worry, man. We are forward. Well, can we say our blessing? Yes. Thank you, God, for the perfect food, the perfect birds, the perfect legs. It's good. Okay, okay. On mange, et après on entre tout à la figure. Ça marche. I love the way the butter shines on her lips. The butter shines on her lips? Yeah. It's the tartar sauce that they I'm not sure I can take this any longer. What? Did what? You, what did you say? Hey! How is it going? Don't, don't, don't you don't you don't you be putting a finger towards me. <laughs> take that! Oh, oh Jesus! Oh. Hey, what about the tank?
windsurfing was an amazing adventure for me. I mean, it, you know, I, I didn't have uh, an education of sorts. Um, uh, I dropped out of school in grade eight. And when I came here, um, it was straight to work and something I loved to do, which was windsurfing. And it gave me uh, a muse, uh, a, a direction to, to fuel energy into that uh, really kept me out of trouble. And, um, you know, gave me a really nice option and it really turned into something which I didn't expect, which was a career for 10, 12 years. And I got to travel the world and meet people from all over the world. And, you know, I don't think there's any better education than that. You know, Jason Pryor definitely had probably some of the most fun in windsurfing ever. Maybe he never chose to go on the world tour on windsurfing or he, he uh, but he's like one of those guys. He's a very hard worker. He has an incredible approach to life. And I mean, you can feel it when you just meet him. He's, he's really stoked on what he does. He works harder than anybody in, in the construction business now. I remember meeting Jason Pryor at Kanaha. We were both little kids and this dude ran up to me. He's like, hey dude, let's go sail. Da -da with that little high-pitched voice, and it's, I think it's gotten a little deeper, but it's about the same. And he was straight out of Canada, and that guy rules, bro, because that guy charges, and that guy is just straight up the real deal in my book, you know, whether it's surfing, working, sailing, you know, or throwing some sticks in the barbie, Jason's ready to give his, his all, you know, and, and for, for lack of a better term, I would call him a working man's hero, because, you know, he came from a a working class place in Canada and, and he made the dream happen for himself. He came and just buckled down, got the sponsors, did the big moves, wrote it, you know, and now he's on to a new level in life. But I know he's still out in the water and he's doing his thing and he's got a beautiful family and he's stoked. So I'm stoked for him. Uh, Jason Pryor, he's not only a great windsurfer and surfer and all around water man, but he's, he's a great person as well. Um, he was driving home one day along Baldwin uh, Avenue and he saw some legs being dragged through a cane field. Well, most people would just keep driving or call the police. Jason got out of his truck, ran over there and pummeled the guy and put his foot on his throat and called the police and saved this girl's life. That's the kind of guy he is.
Uh, Francisco Goya, that guy is like a little dream story. Yeah? He came out of Argentina and came to Hawaii and trained and won a world title. But not only did he win a world title, he won it in style. I mean, Francisco came out and, and in that little period of time, just he was the man. He took it to a new level and he was doing stuff that nobody else did. And the cool thing about Francisco is that he did a lot of the stuff the kids are doing nowadays. He did it before them. And he did it with a lot of style. I mean, he, he really concentrated on, on keeping his lines clean, and he still does it to this day. I mean, when he gets out in the water, it's definitely like, hey, right on, Francisco's going out. Let's check him out. And he's a really nice guy, got a great family, and, you know, I wish the best for him. Yeah, one year went really, really well in competitions. Like, it was, I always went, was, um, I started doing good in amateur events, and then I started doing a little bit better on the professional events, and then suddenly, one event, like uh, in '93, uh, four years after I moved to Maui, it was uh, I did really well. We were in the finals with Jason Pryor, and uh, so it was pretty amazing. And uh, and then I went through like um, you could say like a dry era where I didn't do that well in events, and um, I wasn't really I was always focusing more on like you know, uh, a maneuver or really trying to do 10, 10, 10 instead of, you know, just go for like three sevens and instead of trying to do, you know, three tens, you end up with one ten and two zeros because you end up, you know, on the water swimming for your gear or... So until I kind of got a little bit more mature, I think, in the competition that it took a while. So I was winning isolating events, like I'll win one event and then on the next two or three I will be losing on the first rounds. Um, it wasn't until 2000